Hey, David here, back again with the Sparrow Scout. We finally got the FPV gear on it. Pretty excited to try that out. I haven't flown it yet with the FPV gear, but the previous tests have been a lot of fun flying it. If you haven't seen those videos, go check them out links are below today i wanted to talk the details a little bit more about this airplane and to let you know that right now the stl files and the plans are available on printables.com my next video i plan to make a detailed build and i'll build another one and we'll print the parts put it to get together in the order that i do it the wing build is the same as the slow stick wing build it is a different wing, but the build is the same. I just want to hit on some of the main parts. This is a parasol wing. It means that the wing is way above the center line of the aircraft. The prop is above the tail surface as well, so that creates a little bit of an interesting uh, flight characteristics. But the wing is in clean air when it's flying, so it's, it's not being disturbed by the, the air factor of the prop in the front. We have the pusher format. The motor is behind the wing. This is made completely from two sheets of foam board, the five millimeter foam board. The motor I am using is an 11, 1120KV D2836 brushless motor. Again, links will be with the product on the printables.com webpage. I recommend a 30 amp ESC with a 3 amp BEC. And the propeller I'm using with the 1120KV motor is an eight by six prop. You can probably go to a nine easily. Um, I'm going a little under because I've I want to extend my flight time and get good flight time by a little lower amp draw. The servos I, I like to use, the MG90D, the digital servo. They're smooth and they trim well and they're pretty cheap to get. I'm using a 3S 2200 milliamp battery. The camera I'm using is the DJI Vista with the Cadex Nebula Pro camera. And I use the 4x3 format because I like to get more visibility top and bottom without it being trimmed in the, the sensor trim. So a little bit more about the plane. I've got the carbon fiber aero shafts. These are 31 inch. I do not cut them. They're the, the full size. I just take off the fletchings to get them on here. Everything else, the STL, even the control horns, you can 3D print. They're gonna be included uh, with the download. And then the other difference on this than the slow stick is that I've designed the tail to be on top of the carbon arrows. On the sl other slow stick, they're below it. And I did that because the tail wheel and the landing gear are already pretty low to the ground and I didn't want to lower this even closer to the ground. It gives a little bit more distance there. The other thing is it's got the Vista mount. It bolts onto the center strut. And I think it gives me the, the right place where I want the camera and this is my custom OSD which is a Arduino that's giving me altitude and my battery pack. I'm not running a GPS on this one. Also I'm waiting in the mail for my long range receiver, my Team Black Sheep Crossfire 900 megahertz. I've got to remember not to fly too far with this receiver. Just a warning of anybody that, that's flying or beginning FPV is it's super easy to outfly the range of most standard 2.4 gigahertz uh, receivers. So I recommend an ELRS or TBS Crossfire. This is a five millimeter wooden dowel and it's just to create rigidity between the posts that are raised. This is the main body. Let's get FPV. We'll get that going and we'll give it a try. I think the all up weight is just under a kilogram. It's very similar to the slow stick that I have. And it also depends on what kind of battery you're gonna use and how much hot glue you're using in the build. But I try to use as very little as possible. The other thing, these nylon nuts, you'll see them here on the tail in the assembly of the body, either 440 US or you can just get the three millimeter nylon nuts and bolts. So you may have noticed that I've added some color to the to the body. I'm using uh, colored packing tape. This stuff comes from Amazon. I'll share a link for that as well if you're interested in, in doing that. I hate using uh, the duct tape and other colored stuff, but this stuff's pretty light. It works well. The other thing I've got on here is this 180 degree servo. I'll, I'll share a link for that. It's fantastic. It costs more than most um, that I've seen on Amazon, but I have two of them now and I was able to extend it beyond. And if you watch in the video and the testing, I can actually look 
back slightly back it's almost 270 degrees it's definitely more than 180 with the peripheral vision of the camera we should be able to get almost to see the tail the other updates is i did add the thicker wires back there and i'm not getting the bending like we did before which i'm really happy so we're going to send it now We should notice the tail come up off the ground, then we can lift off. So we'll go. There's the tail. Now lift off. Nice. Oh yeah, looking into the turns. If you don't already know this, I have the camera gimbal, the pan, put on my left stick, which is my typically your your yaw, shares it with the throttle. And I like that because I can let go of the stick and it springs back to center. And instead of using a slider, which you're trying to find the center, it can get you in trouble if it slides all the way to one side and then you're stuck. So I, if I panic, I can just let go of it, but you get used to it and you look around and there's Daniel. Watch him all the way around. We can almost see the tail on the left. I can see the prop right there in the far left and uh, same on the right that's great I added the dashboard I added the color the uh, new push rods seem to be great I'm not getting the flex that I was before it seems really good control the only thing I may want to do is reduce the throw on the rudder it is very sensitive and I with the parasol wing and the prop blowing right over the rudder it does tend to be super responsive the Dihedral helps with that as well. I mean, it, I'm just giving pressure in these turns and it just feels so smooth. I'm barely moving the rudder in these turns. It's just a little bit of pressure on one side or the other. There's Daniel. I love the being able to look into the turn. You look into the quarter turn and you bank. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. So the OSD I'm using, whoa, well, that was a close one, Daniel. Uh, the, the FPV gear I'm using right now, or the OSD unit that I'm using, is uh, just giving me my pack voltage. And I, right now my pack voltage says 12 volts, four volts per cell. And um, I get my altitude as well in feet. So I can see I'm 180 feet here. Four minutes. And this is using the Q-Lite OSD with a mini a custom mini uh, Arduino. No GPS on this one. And the one thing I missed from that would be my ground speed. I like being able to see how fast I'm traveling. The wind is in my face right now. <laughs> Bounce and go. And I have to remember that I can't go as far as I do, <laughs> typically.
Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the flights. This series of videos for the Sparrow Scout have been a lot of fun, and I hope you've enjoyed it as well. The file's up, and you can download them from, from printables.com. They are for sale, so it's $5. That's the lowest price I can put on there, but it helps me out, makes it a little bit worth me putting in a little extra time to make them repeatable for people that want to print out the PDF files and cut them themselves or make their own. I appreciate the support, and if you have questions, or comments or want to add parts to the design reach out i'd love to collaborate and and share that i love seeing what you're doing so if you share go ahead and post up your builds on printables i'd love to see and interact with what people are making and, and doing as always get out there and fly and thanks for watching